Hey everyone, this is the phosphorus cycle. Fortunately, this phosphorus cycle is much less complicated than the nitrogen cycle was. So if you already watched that video, great. Um, if you haven't, please make sure you go and check that out first. Um, that one is a little bit longer. Um, there's more explanation that's involved because of the nature of the phosphorus cycle. Uh, unfortunately, there is a lot to cover with that particular one. So with the phosphorus cycle, we're not going to really cycle it the way that we did with the nitrogen, um, simply because um, of a, a really key important thing. You do need to know that uh, phosphorus is still limiting. Um, organisms need to use it to make uh, DNA specifically. Um, um, so it's used to make that DNA. And with the phosphorus cycle, there's no atmospheric uh, component to the cycle. Atmospheric, atmospheric. Um, it's going to be all solid components. It is not my day for spelling. Um, so you do need to know that it does. Um, it's typically going to be found in rock. So it does cycle, especially when um, when rock gets broken down through erosion, um, when it dissolves. Um, so found mostly in rock. Um, and then it's going, as it dissolves, it'll, um, it'll end up uh, in the water and the water, I'm sorry, in, in aquatic systems as it, dissol as it dissolves. And then uh, plants are going to be able to use it um, to make DNA. And then from there, that can go into the herbivores that eat. Um, the plant, so it can dissolve into aquatic ecosystems. Um, and when the organism dies, it will uh, decompose, reintroduce that back into the soil. Um, but if it does end up going into those aquatic ecosystem, it can, um, it can form or it can, uh, lead to algal blooms if there's an excess of phosphorus in the system. And that's it. Thanks for watching.